Well, what a year it's been, people. The bike world has been full of highs and lows. And over the last 12 months, we have seen loads of new bikes launched across all categories. And right here on Just Ride Bikes, I've managed to review a quite staggering 45 bikes across road, gravel, mountain bike, and even some e-bikes as well, reflecting my passion for all forms of cycling. But now it's time to dish out some awards for the best bikes of the year. The road race category has been a really interesting place this year with some big launches and some big updates, making this a tough category for me to judge. But the bike that really stood out head and shoulders above all other bikes is the brand new Specialized Tarmac SL8. It simply is a stunning bike. Super low weight, fantastic ride quality, awesome handling and aerodynamic as well. And yes, it's definitely a pricey, expensive bike, but it delivers amazing performance that definitely moves it ahead of all other bikes I have tested in the road race category this year. The way the bike rides is just sensational. A real turn of speed that leaves our bikes in its wake. And that low weight and the high stiffness and the aero benefits make this a fantastic all-round bike. Whether you're racing in the mountains or in a crit race or just riding as fast as you can on a Sunday morning. And arguably the best update to a tarmac platform in many, many years. A big step forward. And it's hard to see what the new SL9 in three or four year time can redo to improve on the platform they have launched this year. Not only is it one of the best bikes I've ridden this year, also one of the best bikes from the last 10 or 20 years. It really is that good. It easily lives up to the hype and more. Delivers amazing performance if you can afford the big price tag. But hopefully the price will come down in the future. But it really is a state of the art disc brake race bike and throws down a gauntlet to all other bike manufacturers. There are a few worthy runner-ups worth mentioning in the road race category as well. One bike that really impressed me was the fully updated Giant Propel Advance, which I tested last year in the SL, but this year in the more affordable Pro Trim. It's a fantastic aero package, now lighter than ever before. So a really decent weight that won't hold you back on the climbs, but all the aero benefits it offers. Now with space of wide tires, very smart internal cable routing as well. And being giant, great value for money. And there are options lower down the range as well to make the Propel a really accessible aero race bike. And now a worthy mention to the Carnago V4RS. A small update on a V3RS, but definitely an improvement in all key areas. A bit smoother, a bit lighter, a bit better handling, and a really nice riding bike. I like the way Carnago ride with the geometry more stable, more planted on fast descents, and a very easy bike to ride at speed and over long distance. And riding this bike, it's easy to see why Tally Pagacha is doing so well. Of course, it's not just about the bike, but a bike definitely doesn't hold him back, and definitely a worthy alternative to more mainstream bikes in this category. And lastly, carbon fiber isn't the only option if you want a high performance race bike, of course, and the Blackheart Road tie is a reminder that titanium is a fantastic choice for a race bike. Really good stiffness when you're sprinting and attacking and putting the power down. Good smoothness from the frame material. Not as aero, of course, as a carbon fiber race bike like Atomic SL8, but on the Blackheart Road tie, a one piece carbon aero handlebar and full internal K routing, which is something you don't often see on a titanium road bike. So a real interesting choice if you don't want carbon fiber, but you still value high performance and speed and great handling and comfort. And the Blackheart Road Tie definitely ticks those boxes. One of the more interesting bikes I've ridden over the last 12 months. Let's move on from those super expensive race bikes to my award for the best valley road bike in 2023. And there were quite a few contenders here, but the one that stood out for me was the new Merida Skultura 7000. Now Merida isn't the sexiest brand in the world, but they make really good bikes, fantastic engineering and design and performance, and the value for money is always really good. You get 
better parts, equipment, wheels, tires, and group sets on a bike of this price compared to more popular bike brands, shall we say. So great value for money, good equipment for the money, and a frame that doesn't let the whole package down at all. Aerodynamic, lightweight, stiff where it needs to be, plenty of comfort as well, and generally a really good handling bike. And it's definitely a bike that if you were to ride it blindfolded alongside a more popular bike, you might not be able to tell the difference. So really exceptional performance and definitely my best value road bike of the year. And now for some worthy mentions for bikes that almost clinch the top spot in this category. First up was a brand new Vitus Venom Evo, a dual platform road and gravel all road bike that really impressed. A smart aero carbon fiber frame and fork with space of wide tires, mud guard mounts, and a bike they sell as either a road bike with slick tires and two by chain sets, or one by with gravel tires for off road riding. And it really ticks that box of one bike with two sets of wheels and does everything you probably need it to do. And then, really good value for money being sold by Wiggle and Chain Reaction Cycles, and right now, probably even cheaper than it was when it launched a few months ago. Another bike that really impressed was the Els Vanya Pro Disc from the Chinese company. And we are seeing Chinese bike brands making more progress and inroads into Europe and America. And Elves is one that here in the UK has a local office and now starting to re-offer really either frame sets or complete builds at really competitive price points. So price is definitely agreeable from a starting point, but then the performance and the way a bike rides also lives up to the expectation as well. And a bike definitely doesn't really have any shortcomings in terms of performance, handling, and geometry. And lastly, the Ventum NS1 from the US direct sales brand is definitely worth a mention. Selling direct to wherever you live in the world is a great way to offer better value for money for the consumer. And it's a bike that delivers performance that matches the good looks of this bike. Possibly not the fastest or the stiffest or the smoothest or the best all round package, but it does deliver generally good performance. And you are getting a bike that is quite a bit cheaper than from a mainstream brand. Okay, time for a quick break to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace really is the easiest way to create a new website. Whether you need a website to show off your brand, an online store to sell cool products, or you just want to start blogging, with Squarespace, it couldn't be any simpler. Or quicker, all you have to do is choose a template and there's loads to choose from, customize how the website looks with an easy drag and drop interface, and then hit publish. Hey presto, you have a shiny new website. Add in around the clock support and powerful analytical tools, and there's nothing to stop you from raising your website game in 2024. So it really couldn't be any easier to upgrade your website for 2024. And get a free trial right now using my link down below in the description. And if you enjoy it, when you get 10% off your first purchase, use my special code on screen right now. Okay, on with the video. And now to the award for the best endurance road bike. And we've seen some really interesting movements in this category this year. And proof that the endurance bike category is not dead at all, far from it. And my award for the best endurance road bike of the year is a Giant Defy Advance Pro, both in the SL top of the range trim I reviewed earlier this year, and also the more affordable mid-range Pro Disc I've just received for testing. Now the Defy has always been a popular endurance bike from the company, and the new version is even better than the old version, thanks to a space of wide tires, we've got mudguard mounts, and a much smarter integration of the cables around the stem and handlebar than the old bike. The reason the Defy impressed so highly is that it offers fantastic geometry that isn't as laid back as some other endurance bikes and definitely strays closer to a race bike, but definitely being more relaxed than a race bike with a stack and reach, but then has a longer wheelbase, a slacker head angle and space with wire tires, which impart much more comfort on the ride experience than a TCR, even with the same width tires in my testing experience. And then because it's giant, the value for money is excellent with great parts, equipment, and even a power meter on a mid-range bike as well. So that is my best endurance road bike of the year. But there are a few runners up. For best comfort, 
the Specialized Roubaix is hard to beat. They've improved the bike by making it a bit lighter, a bit more aero and a bit stiffer than the old version, but it remains true to that original with a future shock, external cable routing, but now with space for class leading 40 mil wide tires, which definitely blurs the line between road endurance and gravel more than ever before. And it's a bike, as I found, that can do service as a gravel bike, provided your gravel is very smooth and dry. So comfort from the Roubaix is just fantastic. That future shock is no gimmick, it really works and delivers a smoother ride through the handlebars than any other bike I've ever ridden. This year I have a new award for all the road bike you'll ever need. And it's a tricky award for a bike that offers road speed with endurance bike comfort and practical details. And the one bike that really stood out and really deserved its own award was the NV Melee. It's an aero bike in appearance with internal cable routing, a fantastic looking frame, but then it has space for 35 mil wide tires and mudguard mounts, which you don't often find, or you never find on a road race bike, but you do find on an endurance bike, but it offers the speed and performance and handling agility of a race bike. A bike that definitely blurs the line more than most between road race and endurance, which is why it didn't really fit into either category and needed its own award. So a bike, if you only have space of one bike, but you want to go racing, but you want that endurance, comfort, and space of wide tires and mud guards, this is the one bike that ticks all those boxes. And I think it suits a lot of people in the market now for that one sweet spot of a road slash endurance road bike. Right, now onto gravel bikes, and I have tested a bunch of gravel bikes this year, which made choosing the best one really, really tricky, because there are quite a few that would definitely take the top spot, but picking one yeah, proved to be quite a, quite a tough task, I have to admit. But the one bike that really stood out for offering the speed of a fast aero gravel bike, space for properly wired tires, mudguard mounts and other mounts for bike packing adventures and neat internal frame storage was the NV Mog. This is the company's first gravel bike and my goodness have they nailed it with their first attempt. It's a bike that does everything you want from a gravel bike. Definitely one that can be raced on at high speed with narrow skinny tires and one that can definitely go bike packing with bags, big chunky tires, racks and everything else on they need for a fortnight's adventure. It's a bike that really blew me away with its performance. I love the details on it, like the internal frame storage is really neat. So I like the idea of putting all your spare parts inside a frame, so away from mud and not in your pockets or in a saddlebag really makes a lot of sense. It's one of the few bikes that left me with a bit of a urge to hang on to it. So that's definitely my best gravel bike of the year. But there are a few other bikes that really push it very, very close. And to be honest, I could probably have two, three, or four joint winners. But when push comes to shove, the Envy Mog takes the top spot. So I've got three gravel bikes in the runner-up spots. And the first one, in no particular order, is a Giant Revolt X. So they took the Revolt platform, modified the geometry, made the head tube shorter, and slapped on a suspension fork and a dropper seat post. And my goodness me, can this bike smash down some rough, rocky, rooted trails like nothing else. It takes you to places where you might normally need a mountain bike, but it can go faster on a road and a smooth gravel than a mountain bike in my experience. Another bike that really blew me away when riding very rough technical trails was the 51 Assassin. The geometry on a bike is raked out and slack and long compared to a more road biased gravel bike takes a big leaf out of the man's bike geometry playbook, and boy, does it work well when riding off-road. The more bumpy and rough and technical and challenging the trail, the more the bike comes alive. And you even have the option to adjust the geometry with flip chips in both the fork and the rear dropouts to customize the bike for the riding you're doing. And the price for the frame set, or the entire bike from this small Irish company, is pretty competitive as well. And the final runner up is the Canyon Grail CFR, which I reviewed just a few months ago. 
It's not perfect, doesn't take wide enough tyres, in my opinion, limited as it is to a 42 millimeter wide tyre due to a desire to have a 5236 chainset compatibility for the pros. But that aside, it's a fantastic high performance gravel bike packed full of amazing features and with good value for money, a canyon unknown to be. The good impression start from the fantastic handlebar, this new non-double-decker swoot and curved handlebar that gives good comfort and great control as well. We have what they call a gear groove for putting modular accessories on the top of the handlebar from tri extensions to a phone mount to a computer mount, so a really smart novel idea. And then we have really neat storage baked into the frame so it's ideally placed for racing and fastest known time and adventures. So space in the down tube for inner tubes, gas canister, a pump, and then a very neat aero bag that slides into the space between the top tube and the down tube. That can be removed and refit in seconds. And there's plenty of space in there for extra clothing and food and other bits and bobs. I love that seamless design of the bag into the frame so it looks part of the bike. It's been a year of big new launches and minor revisions and evolutions and the best improved road bike of the year award goes to the all new Cannondale Super 6 Evo. I'm a big Super 6 Evo fan, as you all know, I own a 10 year old original, but the move to Aero a few years ago was a necessary move because most manufacturers are designing bikes for the pros and Aero is the real focus for these new bikes but the last version of the Super 6 Evo didn't really hit the right notes for me. But the new version makes a big improvement over that predecessor and just a better all round package as a result. It retains a fantastic performance, the geometry and the handling, and a nice blend of stiffness for sprinting and smoothness for long distance ride comfort. But we now have much better cable routing around the stem and handlebar than the old bike. We have a threaded bottom bracket so a better bike in many ways, but still retains that speed and performance DNA of the original, which goes right back to the 2011 model I still own and adore. Most of the 45 bikes I have reviewed this year have generally impressed. There haven't been many clangers or flops, but if one that didn't leave me as impressed as I hoped for, and that award goes to the Factor O2 Van. Now this is a bike that when it launched had all the makings of a fantastic race bike. But for me, when I rode it, it didn't really deliver on its promise. Now we have a super lightweight package, but a frame on its own isn't that light, at least compared to what Specialized is doing with Tarmac and Athos. And much of the weight saving comes down to super lightweight wheels, which you can apply to any bike. And then there's the ride quality. It had this sort of odd, disjointed, very stiff at the front and very soft at the back ride experience that gave good comfort, but felt a bit disconnected. Didn't have that seamless connection a road bike needs to give me to the road I'm riding on. And then we had the seat mask, which is a very controversial design, shall we say. And I don't think the benefits of that system will outweigh the potential downsides in the eyes of many potential consumers. And it's just a bike that left me feeling a bit disappointed really because on paper, as I said, it looked amazing, sounded amazing, but when I was riding it, it didn't leave me feeling that inspired by it and left me feeling a bit cold compared to the many other amazing race bikes I have reviewed this year. Now to the best mountain bike of the year. And as some of you know, I love mountain bikes. I'm a mountain biker at heart, and I have reviewed a few mountain bikes, namely short travel XC race bikes. And the one that stood out head and shoulders above all others for me this year, the review is coming very soon, is the brand new Cervelo, the snappy titled ZFS5. It's a short travel, 100 millimeter front and rear, 29er, carbon frame, super lightweight. The way the bike climbs is just out of this world. One of the fastest climbing race bikes I have tested yet. Faster than that Canyon Lux World Cup, which was definitely no slouch. That super lightweight carbon frame, one of the lightest in the category, 
plenty of stiffness, very efficient torque suspension, works when it needs to, just gives a bike that accelerates and climbs over any terrain, steep or gradual, technical or smooth. Just fantastic performance, really does climb so well. And the suspension has a dual lockout for forks and a rear shock, but even an open, it doesn't bob around, it's not robbing you of energy and speed when riding up smooth terrain, but it's very active on big impacts and just works when it needs to, and it's definitely more supple and comfort inducing than the Canyon Lux World Cup I reviewed earlier this year. Another bike that highly impressed me this year and almost won the award outright was a new Pivot Mac 4 SL. I've always liked Pivot bikes thanks to the Dave Weigel dual link suspension design and this one is a fantastic race bike. It's super lightweight and the suspension is probably one of the best suspension systems on the market. It's so active, so supple or small stuff, supportive on medium to big impacts, very efficient when pedaling as well. There's the option of a lockout as well so you can firm it up for smoother terrain but it's a bike that delivers fantastic climbing presence and also descends like no other XC race bike. It's like a mini enduro bike. So capable is it on the downhills. It's a very fun bike to ride whether you're racing or just smash around the woods at the weekend, as I like to do. And the other runner up and one of the most improved bikes of the year was the updated Canyon Lux Trail. They previously took the Lux platform, the XC race bike, and gave it a down country makeover, but it wasn't that successful. But this new version, thankfully, is much more successful. So more travel, bigger forks, drop a seat post, slacker geometry, and some neat features like internal frame storage, made it a fantastic bike when you are riding terrain where you want the lightweight efficiency of an XC race bike, but you want a bit more travel to help you out on steep trails where XE race bike can normally come a bit unstuck. This one definitely comes into its own on that sort of terrain. And it's also a perfect candidate for a long distance off-road bikepacking adventure where a gravel bike might not be capable enough. This could be a good option for that sort of route, ride and race. But now it's time for the best overall bike of the year. The single standout bike of the 45 bikes I have reviewed in 2023. And this, let me tell you, was no easy task at all. Because as you've seen from watching this video, there have been some amazing bikes this year. And really any of these bikes can win the overall title. But in the end, I think the one bike that really stood out for a number of reasons, performance, ride quality, value, looks, and other subjective variables was, drum roll please, the Giant Defy Advance Pro. This, I think, is easily one of the best bikes of the year. It's smooth, comfort is fantastic, it goes like the clappers, there's plenty of comfort and smoothness from the frame and other features on it. The space of wide tires, you fit mud guards, but they aren't trying to make it a crossover gravel bike as other bikes are trying to do. So it has a quite clear remit about what its focus is. And its focus, if that rider enjoys riding fast, but wants a bit more comfort and doesn't want anything else, wants it to be a road bike first and foremost, and not try to be a gravel bike or something that it isn't. So that for me is the overall best bike of 2023. And what a year it's been highs and lows. Let me know which of these bikes are the ones you would personally vote the best bike of the year. Maybe it's a bike I haven't included in this video because I haven't reviewed all the bikes on the market. And I can't wait to see what next year brings. Now there is a video on my predictions for next year coming up very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that by hitting the button right here. And if you wanna see some of the best road bikes in 2023, then hit the video right up here. But that's all today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.